Hey, what's up? Matt Wyatt here. The SEC championship game in the books. Georgia got it done. Now, there's a lot to look at in this game. Georgia's defense would be a great film study in and of itself, but I thought I'd start off this week taking a look at the scoring plays in the game, how the ball got in the end zone, and how those plays actually were designed. So let's take a look at those right now. First score of the ball game is Auburn. They go two by two, four wide receivers, and it's man all the way across for these Georgia DBs. And what they're doing is they are putting these guys back here kind of floating free against the coverage. Now, when you go motion across, when a quarterback has motion and he sees a guy run with him, he knows it's man. So he also knows that the linebacker is going to have the back in man-to-man -man too. So the play fake should hold the linebacker right there, and you get that slant right behind him open, and it works. Safety comes over. This is that backside safety who's free, but because of the strong throw and a slant, and you only got to throw the thing seven yards, you don't have time to get there and make a play. Next scoring play, Georgia runs a little fake toss sweep out here and ties the game 7-7 in the uh, second quarter. And I think one of the things that really sells it is the action of the tackle. See him sprint out of here, and also the fake action, the QB, really gets the defense sold. But the problem that you have is you don't have anybody really over here worried about coverage. So they motioned in and are blocking with the outside guy. And so here's a touchdown maker, the tight end who lined up in the slot. He's just going to slip behind and be wide open. Also, though, if you look at the backside, they get two guys open in the end zone with no coverage for a TD. Pick your poison. One or the other is open. Tie game, 7-7. Georgia then took the lead with a couple of field goals. So instead of watching them kick field goals, I thought what we do now is I'd show you the key plays on those two field goal drives for Georgia that kind of led to them getting in field goal range and taking a 13-7 lead. Now this isn't a scoring play, but it led to the field goal to put Georgia up 10-7. And if you look, they're out here at midfield. They go two by two receivers, so you know two on either side, and the ball's on the right hash. So with the ball here... They've got the most space to work with in the pass game over here to this side of the field. Well, look what they do. They line that back up here left of the QB. And what this linebacker with his alignment is thinking is they're going to zone this thing back this way if they run it like you see so many times. Georgia, though, has just called this thing where if they get this man-to-man -man that they're getting right here, which is man across, especially with the linebacker there one-on-one -on -one the back in coverage, this is a called swing route. Just going to flip it to him on purpose. Here's one thing that shows you that. As soon as the ball is thrown, I mean, there's no route happening for number two right here. The receiver's already blocking. So this was a call deal. They're going to flip it out here based on the alignment of the defense and that middle linebacker who's a step off. Now, this guy gets off his feet and has a chance to make the tackle after the completion. Here's the linebacker trying to get out there. Nice job. Here's the other who's gotten free. So now the next thing is, can this guy make people miss out in the open field? Makes two guys miss and off and running. Big play. Georgia kicked the field goal a few plays later, took a 10-7 lead. Now here's a big play that led to the next field goal that put Georgia up 13-7. Now they had a couple of big runs in this game where they would take advantage of Auburn's defensive front and then the next level guys shifted over one way. In this case, they're over this way. And so the hole is kind of back in here. They're going to zone this thing within the back's going to bounce it out that side and they block it really well. See, they pull that guard around, and he doesn't get a great block, but because of alignment, this is happening. He got the hole already over there, and these two guys are just kind of out of position to defend a cutback anyway. So then it's a matter of getting through. And then also Nick Chubb is so good at breaking tackles, especially that first guy that he sees. Big run. They kick a field goal a few plays later, take a 13-7 lead. So second half, Georgia up 13-7. They, uh, this is their second touchdown of the game. Two tight ends. This is old ace formation with a back back there. And Auburn's very concerned about the run here. So what they do, they just single up the guys on the outside. And Georgia chooses this one with back shoulder. The thing is, the timing is perfect. Watch a QB, one, two, three. And right here, the placement of the football is key. Because you know these guys' momentum are pushing back into the end zone. He puts the ball right on the pylon. The, the corner is already trying to get his head around, expecting back shoulder. But the throw is so perfect on the pylon, it doesn't matter. So that made it 19-7. to So Georgia wanted to go for two to make it a full you know, 21-7, two-touchdown lead. And look what they do here with the motion. Line up, bunch it, and now they've motioned everybody out of there on the two-point play. 
And when that happens, you wind up with four guys here and a single guy up top, and that's what they want. They want to get everybody thinking something's happening out here just so you can get this one-on-one, -on -one, and it's the same thing on the two-point as a touchdown. Going to back shoulder it against a corner, get the corner turn. Quarterback puts it in a perfect spot, and the receiver makes a play. And here's the last touchdown of the game for Georgia to make it 28-7. They're up 21-7 at this point. They motion the third man across. And when they do that against this Auburn defense, they're going to wind up with a tight end, a slot, and a receiver. So three receivers into the boundary of the short side of the field. What it does with Auburn, they're in a nickel. Here's your nickel back and safety. So they have these nickels, only two linebackers, so they get what they want. Again, like I showed you earlier, they got the four down, but the two are shifted away from where a cutback could happen if you zone it to that side, and that's exactly what happens. Now the key block here, look at this center. Snaps the ball. He's going to manhandle that defensive tackle. He's driving him up off balance, and actually because he's so physical, he picks off the linebacker too. And I don't underestimate how important this is and this to get him to the next level. But this center taking one guy and going and getting two guys with the same block is really key. The other thing is the safety who was on that side and unblocked. He stepped in and hesitated. Now he's trying to retreat back here thinking he's going to catch this guy, but never gets a finger on him. Big home run. Put the game on ice. 28-7 Georgia. That's the last score of the ball game. Hope you enjoyed that film study of how Georgia got it in the end zone more than Auburn did in the SEC title game. And now it's off to the college football playoff. Uh, hey, if you enjoyed this video, there's something I want you to check out. It's called renaissancenation.com. You know, just like you're a football fan and you get these little niche videos from me, other areas and other genres, these really cool insight and videos, uh, things that you might not have seen before, especially locally here. All right, do me a favor and like my Facebook page. Would you putting these videos out pretty much every day? Got a whole schedule for the month of December, as you can see right here behind me. It's all scheduled out. And so those will be coming your way every day. Like the Facebook page and hit me up on Instagram and Twitter as well. I am Radio Wyatt. All right, see you next time.